So how do I connect my ICOM IC7300 to my Shure microphone that I've got right in front of me? Hello, I'm Hayden VK7HH from Ham Radio DX. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I managed to connect an external microphone to my ICOM IC7300. <laughs> First of all, thank you everybody for watching the channel. I really do appreciate the support. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helps you or if you enjoy it. And also uh, subscribe below the red subscribe button just down here if you are new to the channel and haven't already done so. Please do that, I would really appreciate it. So the ICOM IC7300 is my uh, HF radio that I have here at home. And I purchased this Shure microphone. This is the Shure MV7 microphone, uh, which has a dual XLR, as you can see on the back there, an XLR, and just behind there, you can't quite see, also a USB output as well. So I picked this particular microphone because I wanted to use it for streaming um, and also making videos, obviously, as well. But at the same time, I wanted to use it with my 7300. So uh, the dual... USB and XLR output looked like it was ideal. However, I come across a couple of issues which I thought that I would share with you today and the interface that I'm using to uh, get around those issues. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I went ahead and I purchased the AD1-IC cable from Heil. This is a uh, special um, microphone cable that will work with plenty of ICOMs, um, not just the 7300, but also uh, the majority of ICOMs that use the special, how many pins is it? I think it's eight pin, one, two, three, four, yeah, eight pin. Um, connection that plugs into the front of the radio and what this does is this uh, breaks out the PTT so we've got a quarter inch uh, jack here uh, for a foot switch a PTT foot switch and a 3.5 millimeter socket for connecting a microphone to um, or Usually, I think these are used for headsets as well. You can buy these in a variety of different uh, connectors. You can get them with XLR and all sorts of other connectors, but check out the uh, Hiles website for that. But this was the particular one that I bought. Now, I ran into a problem with this when I went to wire it to the, uh, the Shure microphone. I connected uh, it up, and I was getting a buzz and some pretty nasty artifacts that were happening in the background. Um, when I connected uh, it just to the 7300 without doing anything else. That was made even worse when I connected it to my computer as well. So the IC7300 has a USB sound card in it. I connected the 7300 to the PC to use the sound card because I wanted audio coming from the radio to the computer and the buzz was just even worse. So I thought, well, how can I get around this problem? So this is what I did. Now have a look at this diagram that I've put together. I'm hoping that uh, everyone can understand this. We've got the, we'll start from the left to the right. We've got the ICOM IC7300 and you can see the AD1 uh, or is it AD1? AD, yeah, AD1-IC uh, cable. So the cable connects into the front of the 7300. Then we've got the foot switch. That's quite uh, straightforward. That's just a quarter inch uh, plug that uh, goes straight into that uh, uh, connector for the PTT foot switch. Then we've got the 3.5 millimeter jack. Now coming out of that, we can see that there is actually eight volts which appear on this uh, this pin, the microphone pin off of the uh, IC7300. I believe it's also like that on a few other ICOMs as well. What this does is it provides eight volts to the microphone for the element to work. So we need to make sure that we don't have eight volts on this pin. So what I use is a one microfarad tantalum or electrolytic capacitor. Now what you can do is I've read online where you can only use a bipolar or a non-polarized capacitor. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can use a polarized capacitor. Just make sure that the positive lead is in on the side of where the voltage is. So in this case, we wire the positive side of the capacitor to this side that connects to the radio. So you can see that reflected in the diagram there. 
And what I use is a 600 ohm isolation transformer. So that is connected to the top half of that uh, transformer. The bottom half of the transformer is connected to ground. The other half of the transformer then connects to the XLR plug, which then goes off to the shore microphone. So you can see there that pin one, uh, the wiring on the XLR connector is pin one, which is the shield goes to ground. Pin two, which is the hot connector on the XLR goes to the, six, uh, the other side of the 600 ohm isolation transformer. So the top part of the uh, diagram there onto the top of the transformer and pin three goes to cold. So pin three and pin one are both tied to ground. So I've only reflected two wires going into that uh, into that transformer. So I, th I think you get the idea that uh, pin one and pin three both go to ground and pin two goes to the top half of the isolation transformer. And we've also got there the USB uh, connection from the microphone goes into the PC. And using this, I get no buzz. I get no uh, can, uh, no issues at all with the microphone. I can use this at the same time as I stream and also talk on the radio as well. Uh, so uh, it works quite well. So using this isolation transformer effectively isolates the XLR connection from the 7300. And I think what I was getting was a uh, ground loop. That's uh, what I've used and it worked quite well. I'm sure that this would work very uh, well with other microphones as well. Just make sure that you use that capacitor because you don't want to 8 volts going across a uh, an element of a microphone that's, uh, say, a dynamic microphone that uh, will short to ground and uh, pop, your, pop your 8 volt regulator in your radio. So it's quite important to make sure that you don't do that. So here's the, iso here's the box, the isolation box that I made up. Basically, it's just an XLR plug uh, or sorry, an XLR socket on one side. So I can run a XLR extension lead from my microphone to this isolation box. And here inside is the transformer. Now, uh, just see if I can focus that. So you can see there that I've got pin two, uh, sorry, pin one and pin three both connected together, uh, going to gr the ground side of that isolation uh, transformer. Oh, if I can get my angles right, there we go, to, to that side. I've got the hot going to the other side of the transformer. And then we've got our capacitor here, which goes to an RCA connector and uh, the, the ground of the of the uh, RCA connectors going to the other side of the, the transformer. So these are these are this transformer basically isolates this side from the other side. And uh, I just use for convenience, as I said, an RCA connector, which then plugs into this transformer box and the 3.5 millimeter mono jack. So it's not a stereo, I should have uh, mentioned that before, but a mono jack uh, then connects to the uh, connection from Heil. And that's all there is. Oh, oh, getting all my cables all over the place. That's uh, all there is to it. And I just connect my microphone into there. So that works quite well. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description of all of the uh, bits and pieces that I use in my setup. You might be able to make something of it and uh, use it yourself. Uh, the isolation transformers, I think you can get those from any electronic shop. I got mine from a shop here in Australia called Alltronics. So uh, I think my I think the isolation transformer is a 600 ohm to 600 ohm transformer. So that uh, that's the one that I used. So uh, yeah, that's uh, basically all there is to it in, a, in the way that I can use my boom mic here on the IC7300. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, once again, as I said, please uh, give it a thumbs up if it really helped you. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching 73.